Hello there, and um, welcome to the Arm and Muscle Top 5 Steel Mace Exercises. So we're going to do this in reverse order. Now I am basing these exercises on a 5 kilogram mace. Some exercises suit lighter mace, some exercises suit heavier mace. However, the 5 kilogram or about 11 pounds is nicely suited to everything. Whether you want to do flow work, complex work, just more traditional 360 work, this five kilograms is going to suit you for all of them so it's going to be based on using this weight instead it also some of the heavier maces really don't suit float suit for low work and some of the lighter maces the center of gravity is kind of off for flow work as well or they're not really heavy enough for more traditional swings and complex work they're there but it feels more like body weight so this is where i'm going So starting off at number five, we have the ballistic curl. So starting in an upward thumb grip cross body position, you go bicep curl and then slide the opposite hand into a prayer position at the top. Keep that mace below the chin, use the momentum to slide back over and bicep curl back down. So at full speed, that's over and over. Now this works for biceps, evidently being a bit of a bicep curl, but you'll use this transition so much it starts to become second nature when you want to do something on one side and then it's a bit of a ballistic curl do it again out on the other side and it's a transition used so 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 often that it's why it has its importance of usually when uh, my clients start a course i give them homework i tell them pr to practice the ballistic curl because it just makes things so much smoother and yes You've got a nice square stance ballistic curl, but eventually that transitions into other things. So let's say we did a rear archer. We can all, we could take that method or methodality modality to do a ballistic curl behind. We can go forward into a bit of a spear strike. We can come round, keep going. And you can take that system, you can take that practice and take it to other things, do ballistic kind of ballistic curls in different positions. And it really helps the transitions between exercises, especially in flow work and complex work. Coming up at number four, we have the cradle switch. So this teaches you to, we've got our standard grips, we've got upward, inward, downward, outward, and then cradle, okay? This is a basis that builds into more things. So much like the ballistic curl, you can start to do other things with it. So for this, you're gonna rest the mace on the forearm and you are technically in an upward thumb grip position here. However, it's more fingers. And then what you can do is push the mace head down, watch the tail on your face. It's another thing that's good about it. It teaches you about awareness of where the mace is compared to you. Let the momentum swing, catch with the other hand. The momentum will still be going here, come up, and onto the other side. So full speed, up and round, up and round, and it just teaches you another method of holding the mace. Now, what we can do is put that into a cradle flow. So we go do a cradle switch, come up, round, pivot the body. And we come round, down, and back, bring it back again. It just teaches you about wrist control. It helps strengthen your wrists in different positions. You have to work that wrist. You've got to have a loose enough wrist to move the mace, but a strong enough wrist to keep control of the mace. And eventually you can start to bring that same modalities into other stuff and controlling the mace. And even then, it can also start to teach you other ways to hold the mace on the top of the forearm in different grip positions. So another one that builds into more things. Now, number three any sort of lunge with a steel mace. You could argue that all lunges can be done without steel mace, great, yeah, and they'll do pretty good lower body workouts. However, get that mace involved, suddenly become off balance. It brings the core into it. So rather than just being hips down, you're now getting, you're now getting sternum down as well. So let's take, for example, a forward lunge. So we're lunging forward, weight's on one side, it wants to pull you over, you've got to use your core. Then if you add tension into the bar, 
So we're trying to bend the bar around the belly button, the upper back gets involved. So we come down and it turns a leg exercise into a full body exercise. What about a lateral lunge? So we step out without a mace. It's a nice, good lower body exercise, working the adductors. However, bring the mace involved. We can have the weight over the uh, unloaded leg, or we can bring it over, start to add more weight onto the loaded leg. And then again, we can crush the bar like an accordion, to so crush it, and that brings an upper body exercise involved as well. There's that ballistic curl we said in number five, the squeeze, the down and squeeze. And it starts to turn a lower body exercise into a full body exercise. And you can even still just do bias stage. You can do, oh, all right, we're gonna do a leg day, lots of leg work, but then add the mace in, we're getting some bonus upper body work in. Number two. So this one's very unique to steel mace. I suppose you could argue you could do it with a kettlebell, but not quite so well. Club bells, yeah, but somehow it just feels better with a mace bell. It's um, a barbaric movement, I'll go for that. So, it's called the whirlwind. You want to be stood in a nice solid position, it really works the core, because the mace is trying to swing all over the place. You've got to resist that. So some of you maybe have seen like kettlebell halos or kettlebell orbits where you're just going round. Yeah, they're okay. This takes it up to a whole new level. So here we're starting. I prefer starting up with thumb grip. There we go. Mace at the side and you've got to commit to this one. If you go slow, it's not gonna work. You've got to really commit to it. So you throw the mace out, round, round the head, back and catch. And that short motion, trying to stop your whole body from swinging round, really smashes that core, really smashes your obliques and your ability to resist twisting motions, which is also very good for your spine to help protect it. So we'll go for that again, up with thumb grip. I'll slow it down on this one. We come out, around the head, let go with the opposite hand, switch and catch. Now you can go for harder versions, you can go for single arm versions if you want. You can go for single arm and then around the body and catch again. There are variations, all of them involve getting that core solid to resist the motion. Before we go on to number one, I'm gonna do an honorary mention to the metronome and the pendulum here. Now these are great exercises to get you started. These are the first two exercises I give my clients and it really helps to bring about what the mace is really good for, bringing shoulder mobility and some wrist control as well. So the metronome, many of you will have seen this already, standing in a rack stance, hands below the belly button, forearms off the body, let's not cheat, and then tilt the mace over to equivalent to one shoulder, and tilt again to the other shoulder. Now to people, and likewise, maybe you, when you first did it, this feels like a really weird exercise, but over time, learning that control, learning that the mace isn't wobbling around, it feels like it's wobbling around all over the place, and it's really not. That you are in control of the mace. You can feel where the center of gravity is, and it starts to strengthen those wrists, strengthen the fingers, ready for further mace exercises. The next one, the pendulum, probably the most important exercise. Now, I haven't included it in the top five because it's essential. You have to do it effectively. Whereas these five that I've chosen are optional to an extent. So the pendulum, however, is if you've never done it before, start in a rack stance, mace on the shoulder, hands behind your head and down, okay? And then swing the mace from side to side. And it's really important to have your hands behind your head. And this is teaching you to have a loose enough grip to move the mace, but a strong enough grip not to drop the mace. And it really begins to open up the lats, open up the shoulders, really working the shoulders in a range of motion that's not really done in traditional exercise. You can find it in club bells, you can find it in kettlebells. And it teaches you to bend those elbows rather than being locked out. That's a lot of tension. Relax and go from there. So of course, that brings us on to the number one spot. Now I think most of you probably, if you 
have any ideas about steel mace, mace bell exercises, garters, you know it's got to be the 360, okay? It's no other training system can really come close. You get away with it with club bells to an extent, kettlebells could do it. I mean, yeah, you could load up one end of a barbell, but the center of gravity doesn't quite work. It's got to be the 360. No matter which style you choose, you might be more traditional, getting a lot more torso movement. Um, I prefer a much more rigid sort of stance. So instead of going round, twist and down, so twisting and then using the lats to pull over, that's more of a competitive style. Um, maybe more of a traditional style if it's going a bit more over the shoulder. I much prefer solid stance, soft knee, shoulders back, head up, really good for posture, hold, keeping that head forward, keeping that body still like a tree trunk. So you have to fight, resist that motion. Again, like a pendulum, we're getting in that movement, opening up the shoulders and bringing it back. The 360 is using near enough every flow to start every flow off. You can do just 360s. I mean, you stand there and do that for five minutes, keeping it even, so changing hands. We know, down, ballistic curl, that ballistic curl again, and just changing, do that for five minutes solid. You're getting a bit of a cardio workout as well, really good for upper body, so, so you don't like running, or you've got knee injuries or hip injuries, but you need to get some cardio in. Do that. It's not gonna be super high intensity, it's not gonna be like interval training, but your heart rate's still gonna go up and it's still gonna do wonders for your heart and lungs and your CV system. Or, like a lot of time, you can add weight to it for more competitive style, so trying to get heavier. Um, you know, what's, I think the heaviest mace I've seen is like 50 kilo. Bearing in mind, yes, momentum does a lot of the work. However, you have to fight momentum. So when it's down, once it's got speed, you've got to fight that mace pulling you to the floor and you've got to bring it back. You've got to squeeze those abs. Your lats are involved, your triceps are involved, your traps are involved, and go from there. So, number one spot, 360. Hope those have been uh, insightful for you. They are just my subjective opinions on what I prefer. If you've got any other ideas or what are your top five, let me know in the comments and we'll see if we can come to an agreement or have a little bit of a debate about that. So if you like this video, click your thumbs up, subscribe, see some more of the workouts, head over to the webpage, see some more information about Steel Mace and I hope to see you again soon.